Hey, this is Adam Torres, and I'm here to tell you that it has never been easier to start your very own podcast. At Mission Matters, our goal is to amplify stories that matter. That means we want to help you start your podcast because your story matters. We can do this in three different ways. One, join our podcast school and take a free or paid course. Two, visit our resources page where we've already figured out what you need, such as where to host your podcast. Or three, heck, we can even do everything for you through our podcast agency, including editing for cheaper than you can do in-house. Oh, and no contracts, services month to month. Get started by heading over to missionmatters.com and click on Start a Podcast. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Entertainment Podcast, your source for all things entertainment. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to be a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com. Click on Become an Author to Apply. All right. So I have Allison Dollar on the line, and she's CEO over at ITV Alliance and chair of the Los Angeles Venture Association Digital Media Group. Allison, welcome to the show. Thanks very much. Good to be here. Ah, uh, good to have you here, and I'm excited about today's topic. Uh, you're the perfect one that I want on the show to talk about this. So we're going to talk about the next generation of TV and streaming. Um, but before we get into that, just to give the audience a little bit more in your background, uh, tell us a little bit more about how you got started in the business and entertainment. Yeah, well, I actually have a master's degree in English literature, which, of course, um, might think doesn't fit exactly, but it does. I started working in documentaries and things like that back in grad school. I worked for CBS a little bit. I was the head of a trade uh, magazine covering the industry. And then uh, in the course of that, I started being a champion of emerging technologies in the industry and created a couple of conferences, including ETB World back in the 90s. Yes, that's long ago, and uh, which has kind of, um, I guess, evolved, you might say, into launching the Interactive Television Alliance, which is a trade association that's set up to advance the cause of next-generation TV in the U.S., and that was uh, literally decades ago. And so from there, I've worked with a lot of early-stage companies, and that's how it, that's how it came to pass. Now, that's exciting, and that's why uh, I wanted you on the show to talk about this subject because you have uh, you have history with it, and you've seen when when a lot of people talk about the next you know generation of TV, maybe they aren't quite as versed in the past, or they haven't like you know worked in, within the industry during that time to see this evolution. So I think that's what makes it a really special interview and interesting. So the next generation of TV streaming, advanced advertising, I mean this whole the, the whole landscape with OTT, everything's kind of changed over this last, I don't know if I'm accurate on saying five years, but in my mind over the last five years, there's been some big shifts. Um, where do you want to start this topic? Like, what are you seeing? Yeah, well, I think the thing is, is that it's one of those cases they say in entertainment overnight success story that is 40 <laughs> years in the making. Yeah. It's the same as for, for technology as it is for talent in that regard. So a lot of these things we were talking about way, way back, having more data-driven way of doing the industry in terms of advertising, buying, and selling, um, even things like VR. I had a VR uh, client way back, uh, back in the early 90s, for instance. They take a long time to both capture the public imagination and also for the operations and infrastructure of an industry to move its very slow, big, complicated boat in the right mm -hmm. direction. And to your point, after we got to the uh, place where streaming was more efficient and easier to be managed, it all has just accelerated and skyrocketed. And people are saying, well, Allison, this is it. This is what you all have been working for. And absolutely right. This has all happened. And, of course, now with uh, COVID has accelerated things even more because you have to have video on demand even more than you did five months ago. Yeah, so what should, um, and I, again, this is a broad question, and there's different types of listeners. There's a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, executives listening, so there's that side that are listening. Then there's also the entertainment side, so I guess I'll ask the, the I think the answer may be similar, but 
Um, what should brands or um, or entertainers, you know, or, or otherwise be thinking about as we head into this next era of TV and digital streaming? That you, like you said, the overnight been working for how long? Twenty years, thirty years, whatever. But what should they be thinking right now? Because I think we are at really an interesting point to where, you know, done properly, there can be some real um, interesting um, outcomes for brands, maybe more so than they considered in the past. Yes. Well, I think one thing we have finally gotten over the the uh, lag time in terms of thinking as these outlets are being segregated places for media buys. And by that I mean it used to be called digital and then you talk about TV as separate and all these other outlets are separate. But of course it's all digital. And when you have connected TVs, as you do now, you go on and your TV can connect to the Internet and to streaming and you have a a variety of boxes and all these other things. So distribution has totally changed. And when that changes, the opportunities for brands, for Madison Avenue, for even network brands in terms of the titles and things that they own have completely uh, opened up. And you see, for instance, now Disney is releasing the Mulan movie direct, right? Direct wow. Disney Plus, not into the theater. Uh, you see Viacom, CBS, just announced its new IQ, which is um, spelled E-Y-E-Q, all one word, uh, which is going to be connecting all their video assets for in terms of media buying into one platform. We've all been wow. in the industry. We've been literally having this conversation for almost 30 years. <laughs> but And now it is happening. It is happening. It's amazing to me. And just that, that thought process of Disney releasing Mulan, mean, what a big brand, right? Not just the, not just the, obviously, Disney, but I mean like the Mulan franchise, right? Like, what a big brand. Who would have ever thought like, we? I, maybe you would have, but me from my vantage point, you know, I've only been in this business four years. I don't have your pedigree time in, time in the seat, we'll say. Um, but that being said, I was like, who, I would have ever thought like a brand like that would be releasing like a Mulan like straight to like their plus platform and you're like, well, wow, like, this, that's to. significant. But this is where history collides, these forces of history, and COVID being mm-hmm. one of them, right? So it all happens at the right time uh, it's because of perfect storm, really, mm-hmm. and figuratively, and to the good as well as, of course, all the stuff that's been hurtful. But for the rest of that industry, it's an accelerant into this next generation of media. And if you look at all the different platforms out there, many of which are not necessarily household names like Fubu TV and Plex mm-hmm. and Redbox and all those all those ways to distribute out through OTT uh, video on demand or advertising supported video on demand. It's a huge landscape of, of brush there. And um, Disney is another good example. You know, it has the 21st Century Fox stock that it got earlier, and that means it has a stake in Fubo TV. So, you know, these things are all so interconnected and there's just Mm -hmm. a a wealth of opportunity for brands to have the kind of exposure and also more important is that everybody's going to get better and better data back and so the advertising can be more targeted, can be more addressable to individual people and behavior and um, more granular and just more efficient as an industry. So that's all to the good. That's awesome. And um, let's talk for a moment to, let's just say some of the smaller brands out there. So, you know, the person that's, you know, just getting started, and they find themselves in this new era and they're thinking, all right, so they had one plan and now they're they're thinking, obviously, maybe not on the scale of Disney. We're talking about the smaller brands right now. And they're thinking about like how that pivot looks for them or how they should be approaching this. Um, obviously, it's going to vary company to company, right? And, you know, what they're doing exactly, but just in general, like what should brands like that be thinking of like in this in this current um, age where they can maybe, they may be going to be able to capitalize on some things? Well, I would sort of think it of it a different way, which is that everything mm-hmm. is its own brand, including, of course, you, right? And uh, mm-hmm. Mission Matters is a brand. And the explosion of personalities, influencers, all those people that are smart and using digital platforms to promote themselves, their point of view, and or the products that they hope to attach to them is another bellwether of where that's all headed. So there, if you own a bunch of content already, there's a variety of ways to get it out there, uh, some of which I, I mentioned, and I'm happy to uh, 
pass that forward to to people. And also, if you're an investor, to look at some of the companies that are looking at data that way and data packaging. It's all kind of interconnected. But uh, to your point, it's all about branding and all about call to action and how you can use that back channel that you can in digital. That was never the case pretty mm-hmm. much in TV unless you had an 800 number or did a direct response thing. But you, so you don't. And you see this whole new crop of these talent management agencies. In fact, I just interviewed one of them for my uh, LA Venture Association Digital Media Group um, webinar series we have. It's called Talent X. And it's a bunch of people that left uh, some of the legacy big talent agencies and they formed a new one just to represent influencers and digital media stars. And so if you look them up, you'll see, well, there's a big pedigree there, of YouTube stars, people that you know through IG and, and uh, Facebook and everything else. So it's quite interesting to see the evolution at all parts of the ecosystem being brand first because digital enables this kind of distribution that allows for new revenue streams. Yeah, completely. I love it. And, and and the other thing I'll throw out there is on the technology side of things for people listening, like example. So we're we're just about to launch uh, Mission Matters uh, TV. And the reason is the technology is amazing. So Vimeo has, I couldn't believe this when we were looking at it, because people have always asked the longer form content, but I don't do, you know, hour to hour and a half interviews on the podcast. It's not our format for our user base where we're, we have this very specifically produced for people that are, you know, that are in a rush. They're like, it's a short form of content, but there is that base that always asks that longer one. So I'm like, well, I don't want to like launch another. I don't want to mess with our current subscriber base that appreciates our, our current method. But then I see this Vimeo platform and it's literally a dollar a subscriber. I'm like, all right, we charge $4.99. Somebody wants the long form content. Now we have that. And it's, it's produced differently. Obviously, it's video. It's other things. But I'm like, wow, this is amazing. It's like our own. And you look at the platform and they're amazing. It's like a Netflix platform. So I'm like, oh my gosh, a completely branded Mission Matters TV, you know, platform like looking like Netflix and subscriber base and all the advanced analytics on the back end that, you know, become valuable over time as you build a platform. I'm like, and it's all included. I'm like, get out of here. How does it how does this even happen? So well, we are really in the happens. Renaissance. It's but amazing. Are, because when you have this kind of distribution, you get that mm-hmm. data and and data is money in this brave new world. It was not really that way before. In the old Mm -hmm. days, it was very generalized. And yes, of course, you reach these mass audiences, but that doesn't necessarily work when you want to sell these other kinds of niche products. Mm -hmm. And so anybody that has a lot of following and gets a lot of data is going to be able to make money, and the brands are going to be able to get exposure and get part of the call to action on their side too. And uh, if you think about... Twitch, BuzzFeed, other short-form things like Cheddar and Jukin, which are all wonderful businesses and actually really good people. All of those, that class of of company has much more prestige now than in the earlier days of the straight Internet streaming that we had. So now the studios, the big studios, get religion because they go where the money is. They go Mm -hmm. where the eyeballs are. And they understand that this, everything has fundamentally changed on the infrastructure and the distribution side. And so it's enabled all these other kinds of business models to be viable. Oh, Allison, you get me all excited over here. I'm like, oh, tell me more. It's so good. <laughs> this is a great time. <laughs> this is a great time to be a creator because I get what you're saying, and I'm like, oh, it's good. Tell me more. Tell me more. Well, and I tell you, this is the thing is I will say very personally, as a, somebody who was a proselytizer way early on, I mean, I remember I had friends like, there's not going to be video on the Internet. And I was like, oh, my God, yes, there is. Yes, there is. And, uh, in fact, I was the chief strategy officer of one of the first companies to go public, a streaming media company. It's called webcast.com. We went public as iBeam Broadcasting. And, uh, you know, so many things that we pioneered them have come to pass, and it's wonderful to see, honestly. I, I guess, personally, it w- would have been nice if it were, I were a little younger at the time when I was right. <laughs> but now I sort of like, okay, good, I was right. Thank you, people. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it's funny. I know. 
<laughs> well, Allison, that being said, I could talk to you all day about this, but we're about out of time on this one. Uh, so that being said, if somebody's listening to this and they want more information and to connect with you on your projects and your group um, to see what's going on, um, what's the best way for them to follow up and do that? Yeah, I think uh, LinkedIn is always the best. It's just Allison Dollar right there in LinkedIn. Or you can email me, Allison, A-L-L-I-S-O-N, at itvalliance.org. And I would suggest, too, that people check out lava.org, the calendar of our events, because the next webinars and things like that will be up there. Fantastic. Well, Allison, uh, it's truly been a pleasure to have you on the show today. So thank you for coming on, giving your background and also your input on what's going on and streaming and going forward. So I know it's a lot of valuable information I got, so I'm sure my audience did also. Um, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Entertainment, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some uh, comments in the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Allison, thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks so much for having me. It's great talking with you. Have a good day, everybody.